Well, hey friends, and welcome to the Dave Cash for Thursday, August 13th. Just a quick reminder that our live outdoor worship service at Conyers First has been moved back to an 8.30 a.m. start time. I'd love to see you there if it works for your situation. If you are high risk or have any other concerns, then our online worship is 11 uh, on Facebook and on YouTube. And so uh, please join us there. I I'd like to remind you also of some uh, bringing the hope opportunities we have as we try to uh, reach out to our students and teachers and parents. Uh, Pastor Shane has got a, a new outreach called Brain Break, uh, which is going to be an afternoon activity in the neighborhoods uh, for kids after they've been doing online school all day, uh, staring at a screen. It, it gets them outside, and they're able to play some games and some other activities. And so we're going to need volunteers to be a part of those teams that are going into the neighborhoods and organizing and leading that uh, ministry. Also, we have a list of all of our church members' names and addresses who are teachers, administrators, and support staff, and stuff like that. And we'd like to encourage you to write notes to encourage them as they encounter this uh, difficult fall that's ahead of us. And so all that stuff is on our Facebook page and in our e-news, and so uh, be looking out for that. Today we're continuing in the Exodus series where we're up to part 24, which kind of seems like a lot. Uh, but I think today we're finally going to be finishing up the case laws. And the next week we'll be moving into and looking at the section about the tabernacle that they carried around with them in the wilderness. And, and although it can be a little, I don't know, tedious, dense, detailed, I'll have to work on the appropriate description. Uh, but the good news is I think there's a way of looking at it that's pretty interesting and fascinating. And so I'm really looking forward to, uh, to teaching that next week. And then coming up on Saturday, which is the day after tomorrow, uh, I've got a, a really special Dave Cast uh, planned. I'll be doing the first ever Dave Cast interview with uh, Jordan and Charlie Flock. Uh, they're a missionary couple that our church supports, and now they're home on leave. And so we're, we're going to be catching up with them and, and hearing about their ministry. And so I think that's going to be a, a, a kind of an amazing time in that episode to, to hear from them. They do amazing things. And so let's get back and start with our lesson for today. Uh, on Tuesday, I read this long passage of scripture that was about halfway through 22 to the end of 23. And, and we're going to continue our study of that section. And so I'm not going to reread that whole entire section again, but I'm going to be uh, instead just kind of referencing a few individual scriptures uh, as we go through. Um, and remember, we've been going through these case laws, and there's been this sort of pattern of giving the example of what the issue or case would be, and then what the consequence or punishment should be for that. And so there's an emphasis on the punishment should fit the crime, right? The punishment should fit the crime. And so, for example, uh, if you let your uh, cow or your sheep wander off and, and they go and they graze on some other field, uh, somebody else's field, and, you know, you've got to make restitution for that. Or, you know, if you dig a big hole in your yard and you don't cover it up properly and someone's animal then wanders in and falls and it dies, then the one who dug the hole needs to pay the owner for their loss and also take the dead animal in exchange. Not sure what they would do with that dead animal, uh, but, but I guess, you know, disposing of the body of a bull or a cow, I mean, that, that should be the offending person's responsibility because that's a pretty big chore. Uh, but anyway, here in this section that I'm about to read you today, you're going to notice a change that, that when it comes to protecting the most vulnerable, when it comes to, to the issuing out the consequences of not doing that, not taking care of the least of these, it's God himself. It says he will take on and issue the punishment. And so uh, l listen closely as I read from, uh, from Exodus 22. It says, uh, Do not mistreat or oppress a foreigner, for you were foreigners in Egypt. Do not take advantage of the widow or the fatherless. If you do, and they cry out to me, I will certainly hear their cry. My anger will be aroused, and I will kill you with the sword. Your wives will become widows, and your children will fatherless. If you lend money to one of my people among you who is needy, do not treat it like a business deal and char charge no interest. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, return it by sunset because that cloak 
is the only covering that your neighbor has. What else can they sleep in? When they cry out to me, I will hear, for I am compassionate. My anger will be aroused, and I will kill you with the sword. Your wives will become widows, and your children fatherless. And so, what do you think about that? I mean, it would appear that God is very serious about his taking care of the vulnerable, don't you think? And, and yeah, I mean, definitely an Old Testament God is on display here. And it might sound a little hyperbolic and a little over the top. But I think what we do see is God's heart for the poor, for, for the least of these. God's passion for justice. And, and think about this in Matthew 25. In that section, uh, you know, where Jesus is talking about what you've done to the least of these, you've done, done so unto me, Jesus is talking about the great judgment. And it's the ones who don't do that that are cast into the fires of hell. And so as we talked about on Tuesday, this theme of justice, uh, justice for the vulnerable, it's repeated throughout the Old and New Testament. And this, this justice is really about this idea of shalom, you know, shalom is just not, uh, it means peace, of course, but, but it, it is about what you should strive for in your community, this health, this wholeness, uh, this inclusivity that, that, that's there. It's not just the absence of war. It, it's much deeper than that and broader than that. And so um, as these Israelites that, that we've been studying and tracking along with for weeks now, uh, is they're becoming the nation of Israel. There are laws that, that will govern them, and, and the foundation and a foundation to them is, is the protection and provision for the vulnerable. And, and a test of that is answering the question, do the widow and the orphan and the immigrant among you, are they safe, are they cared for? Uh, we see this continued in Deuteronomy. I, I want to look at that. Uh, it says, you shall not pervert the justice due to the sojourner. Let me repeat that. You shall not pervert the justice due to the sojourner or to the fatherless or, or take a widow's garment and pledge. But you shall remember that you were a slave in Egypt. The Lord your God redeemed you from there. Therefore, I command you to do this and listen to this provision. When you reap your harvest in your field and, and, and you forget a sheaf in the field, you shall not go back to get it. It shall be for the sojourner, the fatherless. The sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow. That the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. When you beat your olive trees, you shall not go over them again. It shall be for the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow. When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, you shall not strip it afterward. It shall be for the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I command you to do this. And so back on Tuesday, I know I kind of opened up a controversial can of worms in talking about immigration and border walls and detention centers. But, but honestly, I don't know how you can faithfully read the scriptures and not address some of the current climate surrounding immigration uh, in our country. And, and let me just say this, without borders, you don't have a country, sure. And without laws, you don't have a society. I mean, I think that's obvious. And so, of course, we need borders and we need laws to govern and protect us. I, I think that's a given. And, 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 and as Israel becomes a nation, they're going to have borders. And as you know, we've been studying, that's what we've been doing for the last few weeks, studying the laws that are going to govern them. But my concern is this. Are our laws and practices just, or are we perverting the justice due to the sojourners? As the scripture says, or, or let me put it this way, should we, should we let our nationalistic identity or our political parties drive our view of the stranger? Because I believe that neither of these should be our first option. We are Christians first. And our faith, as informed by the scriptures, should guide us. Not parties or politics. And I'm not arguing that we should not be proud to be Americans. And or that we should not even support different political parties. What I'm saying is that we have a duty to honor Jesus over those things. Um, and what has been disconcerting to me uh, that... All too often, the Christian response in the United States on immigration that I hear 
uh, is not very different uh, from those who don't profess the faith. They just go along with the party. And, and the discussions I hear from a lot of Christians who should know and do better tend to be limited to protecting the national borders and the American way of life. And there is a lot of demonizing of immigrants. You know, you know what I'm talking about, calling them rapists and, and murderers. And it's all done in a way that stokes fear. As I said Tuesday, obviously, obviously this is a complex issue and simplistic one-dimensional bumper sticker slogans, you know, that's not going to do it. But I believe ours is a God who breaks through barriers and, and a God who cares about fair dealing and justice for immigrants. Uh, but God is too transcendent and too loving to reside in only one part of that equation. And so we should be mindful both of welcoming the other and also of establishing wise boundaries that, that defend and serve our communities in which we live. All right, I think I'm going to stop there for today. Uh, i remind you about Saturday's Dave Cast uh, when uh, we'll be talking with uh, Jordan and Charlie. I think that's going to be a, an awesome time. Um, but for now, today, be safe, keep bringing the hope, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.